was lost, but he brought me in all his love. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, online service this week. Sorry for the slight lateness, uh, a couple of minutes after. So our first one back in church uh, in Farnsfield today. And a bit of a slight uh, rush getting back in, but um, we're here. Dash down the church. <laughs> Dash down, down the, the church, yeah. <laughs> and you may have noticed the hair's off. Look at that. You've, uh, there's been a sort of variety as, as lockdown sort of continued. It kind of went from short hair, big beard to big hair big beard <laughs> big hair short beard and now it's short hair short beard so here we go um so i'm very pleased and i know others have been slowly getting haircuts and it's uh, it's nice isn't it as we as we can venture out and get our hair cut so big big thank you to colin yeah. um he deserves a, a pay rise for um uh, for dealing with my hair it's gonna be busy now isn't it? <laughs> yeah um but yeah it's great to be able to gather together uh, online uh, again this morning and wherever you are whatever you're doing uh, hope you're doing well and we're just gonna have a few as we usually do uh, a few songs prayers and Joan uh, Joan Woods bringing us our reflection this morning uh, from our Romans reading so uh, that's great so we're gonna start uh, why, why don't I start with a prayer that uh, many churches around the world will be using today and then we're gonna sing a great hymn to God be the glory as we start our time together so let's pray Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. 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 So let's sing uh, this great hymn together to God be the glory.
Thank you uh, for those amazing truths we just sang, those amazing uh, realities, Lord, that through Jesus we can come uh, to the Father, we can enter your throne room, we can come before you and know your presence with us by your Spirit. So, Lord, we rejoice in your goodness to us, we rejoice in the victory you won for us through Jesus, and that through him we are redeemed, forgiven, restored, and set free. Uh, to worship you. So Lord, we come before you this morning and give you our hearts, give you our lives again. Lord, speak to us, we pray, as we gather in your name now. Amen. 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 Great. So we've got uh, Joan uh, Wood, as I mentioned, who's giving us our reflection. Um, before that, we've got our reading from Romans. Uh, the last few weeks, uh, there have been some of the set readings, Romans, but we've not always done them. Uh, but uh, just to give you an overview of where this passage comes in, uh, Romans is, in a sense, Paul's sort of big explanation of what it means to be a Christian, what the amazing things that God has done for us in Jesus. It starts off, there's some, you know, pretty pretty hard reading to start with, um, of all the things that have gone wrong, the, the mess that we're in, but then starts to speak of God's grace and God's glory through Jesus. Um, and this passage from Romans 8 uh, is, is a sort of amazing explanation of what we've received as children of God uh, through Jesus. So Trina's going to read this uh, for us. We are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently.
Brilliant. Thank you, Trina. Sorry, I realise, um, uh, I think the sound was off for the first part of that reading, but I clicked it back on, so hopefully uh, you got the second part. But um, <laughs> apologies for that. Great. So um, here's Joan then to give us uh, our reflection for today. Good morning. From time to time, there is a programme on the television called Air Hunters, and it's on the BBC usually, and the programme follows a company who search out relatives of people who have died, leaving an inheritance that has not been claimed. It is not claimed within a certain time scale. All the money goes to the government. So they use all kinds of databases and methods to track down long-lost relatives of the deceased. They are usually very successful and manage to track down the closest relative, who then inherits the money, etc. And sometimes it is a considerable amount of money. I sit and watch thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if I was tracked down by such a company and was told I had a great, great uncle Alfred twice removed and I was his only living heir and I was to inherit a fortune. But once out of my dream, I accept it is very unlikely to happen. However, we are going to inherit something much more precious and valuable is the heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In Paul's letter to the Romans that we heard read, he used the word adoption or sonship to illustrate the believer's new relationship with God. In Roman culture, the adopted person lost all rights to his old family and gained all the rights of a legitimate child in his new family. He became a full heir to his new father's estate. And likewise, when a person becomes a Christian, he or she gains all the privileges and responsibilities of a child in God's family. One of these outstanding privileges is being led by the Holy Spirit. We may not always feel as though we belong to God, but the Spirit is our witness. His inward presence reminds us of who we are and encourages us with God's love. Because we are God's children, we share in great treasures as co-heirs. God has already given up his best gift, his son, and also the gifts of forgiveness and eternal life. And he encourages us to ask him for whatever we might need. But there is a price for being identified with Jesus. Along with the great treasures, Paul mentions the suffering that perhaps we must face. Because for first century believers, there was economic and social persecution and some even faced death. And even today, in many parts of the world, Christians face pressures such just as severe as those faced by Christ's first followers. To live as Jesus did, serving others, giving up one's rights and resisting pressures to conform to the world always comes with a price. The world in which we live appears to be physically decaying and spiritually barren in so many ways. But we do not need to be pessimistic because we have hope for the future. We have hope for future glory. We look forward to the new heaven and the new earth that God has promised us all. We will be resurrected with bodies, glorified bodies, like the body Christ now has in heaven. We have the first fruits, the first instalment or the down payment of the Holy Spirit, as a guarantee of our resurrection life, as we read in 2 Corinthians. Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. This is our promise, and our Heavenly Father never makes promises he won't keep. Nevertheless, his plan may take more time than we expect, so we have to be patient and wait for God. And then God's will will unfold and place our confidence in his goodness and wisdom. So we may watch programmes like Air Hunters and dream that it could happen to us, that we have a long lost relative who has left us a substantial inheritance. Or we can embrace the wonderful news that as heirs to our Heavenly Father, we do not have to dream about the inheritance he has set before us. The promise, the inheritance as God's children of salvation and eternal life. A promise that we must believe he will never, ever break. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joan. Uh, great words, uh, great encouragement uh, this morning uh, for us. And it's uh, amazing words in that Romans, uh, Romans passage that just um, fill us with hope. Uh, fill us with confidence that, that through Jesus 
uh, we've received this amazing inheritance and um, I thought as, as part of our response you know this um, this amazing free gift is uh, given to us simply through faith through putting our trust in Jesus that's all we need to do uh, to, to become those children of God to be uh, co-heirs with Christ as Paul talks about um, and as Joan has uh, talked about so I thought maybe as we respond to that amazing uh, gift, that amazing privilege of being children of God, it might be good just to, uh, before we sing a song together, to uh, say some words of uh, affirming our faith together in Jesus uh, and in all that God has done uh, for us. So uh, the words should come up um, and I'll say uh, the words uh, and then there's responses for those that would like to say them. So do you believe and trust in God the Father? source of all being and life the one for whom we exist we believe, believe and trust, trust in him. him do you believe and trust in god the son who took our human nature died for us and rose again we, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in him. him do you believe and trust in god the holy spirit who gives life to the people of god and makes christ known in the world we, we believe, believe and trust, trust in him this is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. 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 So just before we sing a song uh, of response as well, uh, let me just pray uh, a short prayer. Lord God, we, we thank you uh, for that amazing inheritance we can receive, that we can be called your sons and your daughters that we can uh, have that close relationship with you, knowing you as our Heavenly Father. As the words in that Romans passage says, we can call you Abba, which means uh, Dad. Um, we can be that close to you. So Lord, we come before you now and we give you thanks for that redemption we've received in you, that forgiveness and that wholeness and newness of life. And Lord, help us to grow in that relationship as your children. Help us to live in that reality all of our days and to walk as your children in this world in jesus name amen amen, amen. so uh, in response we're gonna uh, sing uh, this song we've sang it a few times not for a few weeks now but um, just this song that talks about god's grace and his spirit filling us and leading us on uh, into all that god has for us
continue in prayer for uh, ourselves, for our communities, our families uh, and for our world as well. So Lord God we thank you again for that amazing invitation, that amazing uh, uh, gift that we can be called your children, your sons and daughters through your grace and through faith. And Lord, yeah, as we said, as we prayed already, help us to live in that reality. Help us to grow in that relationship with you. Like any relationship, um, it needs time, it needs uh, commitment. And Lord, help us to be those that give time to that relationship with you. That grow in our love for you as our Father, as our Saviour, as our Lord. Who walk in, in all of the fullness of what that means. Thank you for the great hope that we have of that inheritance kept in heaven for us. That hope of life eternal with you. That hope that one day you will make uh, all things new. That there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And that there will be uh, no more death or pain. Lord, that you are working all things for good. Lord, we thank you and praise you for that. That you are the powerful, mighty God who loves us and has good in store for us and for the whole of creation. And so Lord, we, bearing that in mind, we, we pray for our world, Lord, where we see so much pain and brokenness at times, where we see so much suffering uh, in the midst of the beauty. Mm. Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come. Lord, that uh, as we read, as creation groans, waiting, uh, waiting for the fullness to come. Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come, your justice and your peace that will be seen here on the earth. Lord, that you'll continue to do your work of making all things new and transforming the, the brokenness into beauty. And help us as your children to be those that work with you for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. Help us to be those bringers of light and love to those around us. Lord, help us to see the needs of others and to respond in love so Lord, use us, we pray. We pray too for our nation, for our leaders, as they continue to make uh, difficult decisions, as they continue to lead and navigate us through this crisis. We pray that you will continue to lead uh, them, give them wisdom, and wisdom for all our world leaders at this time. We pray especially for those places where uh, there's particular hardships uh, due to war or famine or need. We think especially of, of the Yemen and uh, other countries who are, um, have experienced long wars and unrest. We pray for mercy for them, that you will give them the resources and the help that they need at this time. We pray for those countries facing uh, famine or uh, with not enough food to go around. We pray, Lord, that there will be fairness uh, and equality for all in that. And we pray that those that have in our world will respond uh, and, and, and give to those that, that don't have at this time. Help us to be those that are generous with what we have and seek to ensure that no one goes without. We pray too for our community at this time. We give you thanks for uh, our businesses, our local businesses who've worked so hard during this time, for our hairdressers that are back up and running. I'm certainly thankful for them. 
and we pray especially for the co-op today uh, all those that work there and rely on on that shop here in Farnsfield and uh, as they've had the break in Lord we pray for uh, those working to restore things and to get things open again um, and also for the staff and all those that have been left uh, shocked by what's happened there mm. and we pray too for our local schools Lord we give you thanks for the teachers and the staff for all that they've given over the last months and as they approach the summer break Lord may you uh, give them good rest over the summer may you restore them after all that they've given out and we pray to you for children uh, in those schools Lord that you will um, continue to lead them through and give them real peace in this uh, stressful time for many of them pray for your peace to be among us all at this time and finally we pray to you for those that we know who are particularly struggling at this time those we know who have lost loved ones perhaps and Lord we pray for your mercy and peace on them that they will know your presence that they will know themselves as your children who are carried and loved by you so Holy Spirit come and fill us afresh we pray help us be your hands and your feet in this world and help us to know your presence with us in all that we do for your glory's sake we pray amen amen so join in our prayers together why don't we say those words that jesus taught us in the lord's prayer our, our father, father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name your, your kingdom, kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen amen brilliant well we'll sing our final song uh, in a moment just a few uh, updates uh, really reminders actually uh, rather than updates today but the church uh, here in Farnsville will be open for private prayer on Tuesday between 10 and 6 so do make use of that space if that would be helpful for you uh, in Kirkington and Maplebeck it's Wednesday and Kirkington also on Sundays as well so it'll be open today um, so again if you if that would be helpful for you at this time please do uh, feel free to, to go in and, and use those spaces uh, to pray and reflect um, as, as I mentioned earlier we started our first service back in Farnsfield today uh, we're going to be every other week in, in the building at 9.30 uh, for simple uh, services some will be communions others may just be uh, services of the word as well but um, they'll be fairly uh, simple for now and, and obviously following all the, uh, all the, all the recommendations that we, we need to at this time um, but so the next one there will be the 2nd of August um, we'll be in Kirklington and Maplebeck next uh, Sunday uh, for services uh, there but do continue to join us online as well each week we'll be meeting at 10.30 uh, at this new time so um, that's going to continue uh, throughout the summer at least there'll be something at 10.30 whether it'll be a full service a couple of Sundays we're off uh, so we'll wait and see what's going to happen uh, for those ones but great well it's been lovely to, to gather together and, and worship and sing uh, today uh, together and we're going to finish with a, a great song uh, there is a redeemer uh, which uh, talks again of god's amazing uh, redemption of us through jesus um, and and talks through that spirit uh, still at work uh, and completing what god has started so let's sing this together
want the spirit to us. And I pray that you'll fill us afresh today, Lord, to continue the work that you've set before us, Lord, and to make this world um, a place where you are known, Lord, that you will open people's hearts in this village, in this country, and in this world, Lord. In this crisis, may you be the hope of the world. May you speak out loud, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds. Holy Spirit, be welcome in our lives. We pray, Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord God, we pray uh, that you will lead us this week in all that we have to do all that's going on in our, our lives. Lord, lead us, we pray, in our work, in our relationships, in all that we're doing uh, in this week ahead. We offer it to you and pray that you will use us for your glory as we walk as your children in this world. Amen. Amen. So as we go, a final uh, prayer of blessing. Oh. And get my book open. Um, so let's pray this prayer. So may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and to the good of all people. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you love today and always. Amen. Amen. May we go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 So th thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to gather together and hope you have a great week and enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, enjoy it. Enjoy the sunshine today. <laughs> it's a bit of summer. God bless and take care. Bye-bye.